Hi, welcome. My name is Gugu Rutherford and I'm here with NASA Internships and Fellowships. I'm here because I was a former intern myself and I have my interns here with me, Katarina to my left, and I have to my right here, Sean. And we're here to just give you guys a good flavor of what it means to be an intern at NASA. And Ask, answer any questions you may have regarding what it takes to get here, um, and just to give you a little bit of dialogue on what it, what really the process was going through the OSI website. So, um, as I said, we're going to give you guys some guidance. So, my first question I want to throw out to my interns here is: So, when you were building your resume, what was really the strongest thing you thought that you did on your resume to make it stand out? above the rest. So let's first start with Katerina. Uh, so when I was working on my resume, I included a lot of detail um, in the opportunities that I had. I included every research opportunity at the university, every internship I had, and I went into detail on what specific things I was doing at these internships with these uh, positions, just to give a good idea of what kind of experience I did have. Um, I included publications. I even included a part-time job I held during the summers and school year at a restaurant. Very good. And Sean, how was your resume um, Something similar. I included a lot of things on my uh, resume that sometimes you might not even think people will be looking for at a NASA internship, but um, you know, as long as you're really thorough about what you've done and um, very descriptive about the skills you have, I think that that's a really good way to really heighten up your resume and make it stand out. Okay. So you're here, you've made it through the, you know, the, through the interviewing process, and you're a NASA intern, and you you come here, how was your experience working with their mentors and learning your job and what your project was going to be at NASA? So are you first, Sean? Okay. Uh, for me, it was interesting. We um, started off doing a lot of research, um, just reading into things and getting kind of acquainted with what I would be studying and what I would be working on. Um, and then after that, I went into a little more hands-on work, uh, designing things and testing them. Uh, and then during that time, it's really a uh, time for you to kind of figure out uh, you know, your communication style with your mentor, how often you're going to meet with them, and how often you're going to talk um, about the project, uh, and just kind of think about things like checking in with uh, how you're progressing and things like that. So it's, a, it's really like begins off as a learning experience, I would say, and then after that it progresses into doing a lot of hands-on work. Okay. And so we're going to also ask Katarina, I have to let the audience know, though, that I'm actually uh, kind of one of her two mentors here at NASA um, under the field of contamination control. So how was your experience starting under our team, Katarina? Uh, it was really great. At Gugu was actually the first person who I came into contact with on the team. Um, she showed me around the lab. Uh, and then once my other mentor got back, I got involved in the project I'll be working on for the rest of the semester, which included um, a lot of background research also. Um, and then really just getting into the labs. Um, learning how to dress for the clean room, um, a lot of hands-on activities since then. Very good. So you're in, the, you're in the position, you're in the role, you met your mentor, and obviously we're all going to stumble upon, you know, these, these problems. These, we, don't, we can't figure out the answer. So how do you get an answer to these challenging questions while doing your internship? Uh, for me, I would say just kind of knowing your resources and what's uh, around you, because you know this is this is NASA, so the people working here are very intelligent, and very well versed on the things they're working on, and so I would say you know for me, I'm working in a pretty large building. Um, there's a lot of engineers around me and a lot of uh, researchers, so you know if I run into a problem and maybe there's a concept I don't understand or maybe I need like a second opinion on something that I'm saying, I would just go step out and ask the people around you. And there's also other interns who so you can run it by really quickly if you're not busy and just say, hey, like, can you take a look at this? Or stuff like that. So, if we talk about the requirements that it, it, it takes to get here, uh, the main requirement for our, our Aussie uh, internships that you must be a U.S. citizen. We have a GPA requirement of a 3.0. Um, for high school students, we accept you, but you got to be at least 16 years old. Um, undergraduates and graduate school um, graduate students that are enrolled um, actively and in, in programs, please um, seek our website, the Aussie website, to um, come in and, and apply. So I'm actually going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the background of our individual uh, in, in turn. So I'm going to first start with Katarina. Katarina, um, you are a contamination control intern, so please describe to us your background on how you actually 
got into your field and how did you actually think that the NASA um, opportunities was what you were interested in? Uh, so my background is actually not in contamination control at all. Um, I got my bachelor's degree in material science engineering um, and I'm in the process of uh, working on grad school applications. Um, and uh, when I got the call for the internship, I really didn't know what it was going to be. Um, and when I got here, I realized that a lot of what I had done in my undergraduate uh, research experiences actually did apply um, to the contamination control. I did a lot of particle analysis um, for metal powders in my undergrad, and that directly correlates to um, particle analysis in the contamination control area. So really, it was uh, a lot of my lab experience that really prepared me for my uh, current internship. And Sean, so can you provide us some background in your experience and how you got here? Give me the exact title of what you were doing your project on. Okay, so my uh, project I'm working on is called uh, Experiments in Fluid Dynamics. Um, and so right now I am studying the Kawanda effect and um, the Kawanda phenomenon and trying to see how it can be manipulated or improved. Um, and so my background that led me here, I'm an aerospace engineering major, and so uh, I've had a few classes on fluids, um, heat transfer, and aerodynamics, and those are the biggest things that are uh, influencing my internship. So, um, you know, during my application, I just kind of talked about, you know, my passion for the subjects and how I feel about them, and um, just kind of experience I've had uh, in college that related to those subjects, and that's kind of how I um, got into this internship. Very good. So, as we can see, we all have various backgrounds. I myself, when I started, I'll be honest with you, when I first applied for my internship, I had no clue what contamination control was, but I got in, and I was very similar to Katarina coming out of material science and engineering. And then, you know, we have Sean, who was very much relatable to what he was doing. So I we really encourage all the students to apply, no matter what your background is, because we do file um, a lot of our applications here. So to give you an idea of when these, when these deadlines are coming up, because deadline is essential. To, uh, for the 2018 summer internships, the application deadline is going to be March 1st. And for the 2018 fall internships, the application de deadline will be May 31st. And so they're listed um, on, this, on, on your screen now. It should be actually the actual period of when you're actually going to be um, here doing the work here with NASA. And so we talked about backgrounds, we talked about how things were, were a little challenging, we, we overcame them um, by doing certain things. As far as, um, you know, at, at NASA, we really want this to be a building block for the students to really drive and, you know, and go further in their career. Um, we obviously want them to come back to NASA, but no matter where you go, we want this experience to be very positive for you. And I'm a big one on networking, so can, Katarina, can you explain to me just how you've been able to network here at NASA? Uh, yeah, so through the internship program here, we have the opportunity to tour a lot of different facilities. Um, and on one of the tours, I was exposed uh, to the name of somebody who works on additive manufacturing, which is what I'm very interested in pursuing in graduate school. And so I was actually able to just email her, and uh, we're in the process of setting up a time for me to go uh, tour her facility, which is really cool because uh, it gives me an idea of what kind of additive manufacturing stuff is going on in places outside of the universities, outside of industry. And Sean, how has your experience been here networking? Um, so far, I think it's uh, this is a really great networking experience, uh, opportunity. Um, you know, being on on center, being here at an NASA facility is like a huge um, benefit to, I guess, going out and actually talking to the people who are working in this field. So, you know, if there's um, some research going on that you're interested in, it's like no problem to shoot the person an email. And I think more than uh, more than often, they're, you know, really happy to close to you and just talk about their uh, research and what they're working on. So I like to hear that you guys are definitely taking advantage of the opportunities here. Um, you're building your networks. Those networks are really huge. I always have a really big thing. I tell people you need to have these you know, social media um, accounts like LinkedIn is a big one I'm really big on. Have a LinkedIn account. Everyone needs one um, to highlight yourself. As far as um, when you were originally applying for the opportunities, um, did you think that you would um, get picked for the opportunity, Katarina? Uh, I did not. Um, I applied for an opportunity at NASA Glenn in Cleveland. Um, I didn't even know contamination control was a thing until I got the call. Uh, and so, really, I had no idea that um, that I would be at Langley um, in the fall. So uh, it was it was a really fun surprise. 
Uh, for me, I completely was not expecting to be chosen. Um, I was thinking that it's just going to be helpful to have an application on file and, uh, you know, I'll fill out a few just in case, but I completely expected to be um, at home in California taking classes right now, but here I am, so. So, the lesson is, please apply. Go to our Aussie website. Remember, we have these requirements. We need you to be a U.S. citizen, um, either naturalized or by birth. We have that 3.0 minimal GPA requirement. High school students, remember, at least 16 years old to come and work with us. Um, but we do have a volunteer process too. But again, even that, 16 years old. Um, undergraduate and graduate students are highly encouraged to apply. Um, you have to be actively enrolled in your program, and we definitely look forward to hearing from you. So, of course, I have more interns because we've taken a lot of interns at NASA. <laughs> and so, here to the left of me is Kua, and here to the right of me is Brittany. And so, um, I'm going to start with you, Kua. Can you just give me a little bit of a background on um, who you are, where you came from, how did you get to um, your, your NASA internship? Yeah, sure. Um, so, hi, <laughs> my name is Kula, and I am a graduate student at the Milwaukee School of Engineering, so I'm from Wisconsin, and I am um, in the Crew System and Aviation Operation Branch, and in that branch, I work on the Crew State Monitoring Project, and what we do there is we actually take um, uh, psychophysiological sensors, and mm -hmm. we uh, implement that to take um, in real-time data to determine cognitive states. So that's the project that I'm working on this semester. Very cool. And how about you, Brittany? Well, I'm Brittany Hopgood, and this is my actually my fourth internship here. And uh, I've worked on different projects at almost all of these internships. Uh, I'm currently working on a project creating something or developing a new model for something called a fluidized bed to help aid in taking measurements uh, called PIBs particle imaging velocimetry without, you know, um, contaminating the wind tunnels. So I like to hear my that. contraption no will go into a wind tunnel. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you want to minimize that. Yes. Good practices. Good practices. So and you know we were talking previously about the experience and the path that brought us here and you guys gave me your background. And I want to know um, doing the actual interview, because everyone wants, wants to know, what did you do to really nail that interview? Can you describe to me, Brittany, your experience? Well, for me, it was more like I was, I was done taking a test, and I get this phone call from a number I don't really know. And when I answer it, I normally don't take phone calls, but something told me, <laughs> you have to answer this call. So I answered, and they tell me, hi, this is blank. We're calling you from NASA Langley Research Center to conduct your interview right now for this project. And I'm just thinking, wait, what project out of the 15 ones that I apply to are they calling me about? So what do I actually fit into these questions? And so he started asking me, uh, so what motivated you to apply for this internship? And for me, I think it was mostly my drive. Uh, since I was younger, I always imagined myself working for NASA, so I, I was very open about that. And I told them, I honestly don't have a lot of experience. That was my first uh, undergrad year, so I didn't really have a lot of experience, but I was very open to learning. So uh, that's what I told them. I, I worked on something called Quantum Dots, and I helped synthesize that so I can definitely, you know, read up on that and help you with your projects. If you do choose me, I know I can make it happen for you. So that was, it's mostly the drive. They want to know that you're interested and you're going to work on it. And Kua, how was your, your interviewing experience? Um, my interview experience uh, was uh, short. I really didn't have one. It was more uh, like they call me, they uh, asked if I was still interested because I was a late selection in the process. And I said, yeah, you know, I am. And um, they basically, well, do you know uh, uh, Python? You know, do you know um, machine learning? And I said, yeah, I, I have a quarter of a class for it. And I did, so, <laughs> um, I did some self-taught, you know, uh, stuff. And so they said, okay, great. So it was, it was pretty simple. Um, and when, uh, when I got here, it was, it's just how you are able to perform and you are able to learn as you go along. Absolutely. And so we just we talked about a lot of learning and being open <laughs> to opportunities. Um, I would say, 
<sighs> what would be your your I guess your great your, your biggest advice about the students who are they don't feel like they have a fit here in NASA. They don't feel like there's something that they're that they, they do that NASA would actually want. Well, how would you encourage them to apply to it? Um, I would say apply anyways, uh, because you never know. You don't want to, sh uh, you don't want to limit yourself because you feel like you lack something. Um, we all have our own unique qualities and skill sets, and you know, as long as you put yourself out there um, and you allow yourself to be searchable, then that is the best way to go. And I would always encourage people to apply whether they feel like it, they um, have the skills or not. Because there's something that uh, maybe other uh, mentors or groups or projects are looking for. And they might come across your, uh, your, your application and they might like that you have a certain skill that nobody else has. And they might reach out to you. Alrighty, so some tips for those who are looking for a, a NASA internship. Do your research. To see what our actually Aussie website is offering and what NASA websites offer as far as like what we do here at NASA. We have so much information. We are definitely the information sharers and we like to get that out. Ask questions, you know, don't, you know, um, and when you ask these these questions on your interview, don't 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 do the general answer. Just actually go and do a Google search and figure out there's a whole list of interviewing questions that are interesting out there that I even use myself. Um, be prepared for that phone interview. It's very awkward, I know, but I actually practice in front of the mirror, my fam family, my pets, whoever I could to get um, to get some good practice in. And also, don't be afraid to share your personal experiences that we are here. A lot of times, there's a lot of overlap in what you've done previously that you never know that we actually need here at NASA. And of course, don't forget to send that thank you note to that interviewer. That really just puts a nice personal stamp on the interviewing process. All right. And going forward, so um, we talked about previously about networking and some of the professional development that you actually get here at NASA. But we have a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. So, Brittany, tell me about some of your fun experience as a as an intern here at NASA. So, at least at NASA Langley, we have a lot of national landmarks like the Gantry. And last year, I actually got a chance to go up there. It's the highest point at NASA. It's about 250 feet up in the air. It's That's where they do the drop tests. So they test um, different vehicles to see that they actually work if they crash or not. Hopefully not. <laughs> and <laughs> so I'm terrified of heights. And when I went up there, I had a mini, a mini panic attack. And I was like, this is the most horrible thing ever. Yeah. And everyone was wow, this is beautiful, but I kind of, you know, just tried to enjoy it. Uh, that was one of the fun things that I actually got to do here, which you could actually get to do if you take the chance and apply. So. What about yourself, Kula? What do you do for fun here on NASA? <laughs> well, there's a lot. Um, I really I really enjoy, like, our uh, tours to different facilities here. I know we visit um, some of uh, the launch last semester at Wallops and also going to God and just experiencing uh, what they do there and the research and uh, activities that go on there. Don't forget, deadlines are coming soon. So 2018 summer internship is going to end. The application deadline is March 1st. 2018 fall internships, the application deadline is May 31st. And as you just heard from all of our interns here, please apply. We are definitely looking for very broad backgrounds. And NASA employees and actually hires a lot of different people. So our interns are going to be just as diverse. So we look forward to definitely seeing your application. So I have a couple questions here from our audience. And so um, it's for our interns, actually. So little Q&A from the audience here on Facebook Live. So how did you um, get about finding housing here on Center? I'm actually going to start with Pua. Mm -hmm. um, well, they were really helpful about housing here. Um, uh, what they do is they sent out a list um, that has uh, housing with a lot of the other engineer, engineer, NASA engineers here. And uh, we rent rooms from there. Um, other options are um, uh, other apartments around the areas that they have plenty of and so that's what we um, did and we just called and make appointments to come in and check to see if it's reasonable for us and if it's uh, within distance. And Brittany, how did you decide on a location during your we, application process? After a few years of being back and forth coming here, um, I actually made some friends 
that work here and live here. So this time I was more set on, I'm going to live with this person. But before, yeah, you, you have the housing guide that helps you choose a location. Okay. And Sean, when you were looking to apply, and you, of course you could select, you know, the, 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 the prize centers you want to go to, um, you could select all. How did you decide the locations of where you selected? Uh, for me at first, I was like really bad on just going to JPL because that's really close to home for me. Um, but then I realized that, you know, there's so many opportunities. There's, I think, 11 master centers all over the United States. And um, the opportunities are limitless. So I would say, uh, or me, I was like, okay, let's branch out and let's try to find an opportunity, you know, maybe that's not so close to home. And it ended up working out. Alrighty. And so we have another audience question here. It says, what is the most important requirement to intern at NASA? So... I guess I'm going to take that one. So, <laughs> of course, you got to have a 3.0 GPA at least. That's going to be, that's definitely going to be um, the qualifier, the minimal bar qualifier you have to um, obtain. We also do have the requirement for um, some of our Aussie internships that you do have to be a U.S. citizen. However, we do have opportunities for international students. And so these are the actual requirements, again, for our, our, our general Aussie um, NASA internships that we have here. U.S. citizen, minimal 3.0 GPA. Again, the high school students, we do take them, but you have to be at least 16 years of age. Um, we do, um, obviously, we're going to definitely seeking those undergraduate and graduate students that are actively enrolled or accepted into uh, a full-time accredited institution. And we definitely, again, look forward to those applications. And then I have another one, and actually I was kind of rolling into that one as well when we talk about what does it take to be an intern here at NASA. Um, I would say also we do have um, opportunities for international students. I'm looking at the question here. It says, are there international students? Yes, we do have them. And how do we apply? You go to Aussie. You go to Aussie. There's definitely a link there specifically for international student opportunities there. You need to go through those requirements and those guidelines. Here's our actual Aussie website right here. Um, just click the student um, uh, opportunities, then internships, and all this information is going to come up for you. But I will tell you this. I need students to remember, and we always face this here as mentors, please fill out your profiles. Um, a lot of those profiles can be blank, and if they're not completely filled, we won't be able to see it. So when you go to this Aussie website, please be considered of filling out that profile. Uh -huh. More interesting questions here. So do interns have the um, have to live within a 50 mile radius? That's one of the questions. So I'm going to give that uh, that question to Katarina. Um, so as in like working at a center, I'm not from Virginia, so I don't originally uh, come from a 50 mile radius. Um, however, I do live closer to the center just for convenience. I do know people um, who live up in Richmond, which is about an hour away, and so uh, people will live all over just as long as they can get to work on time. <laughs> all right. And then Kua, I have one more question for you. I'm taking up all these questions. Sure. So um, when you were making this decision to, um, to, to, to apply, you had to, write, uh, you had to get a recommendation letter. So the question is, how do you choose the person to write your recommendation letter? Well, I uh, in the Aussie application form, um, you fill out um, the person that you want to write your recommendation letter for you, and you send out uh, a link to them. And what I did was I sent it out to two of um, uh, two links: one to my robotic advisor and one to my graduate advisor. And it was just kind of you know whoever came first because I was in the process of applying and just waiting for that to get in. So as long as one of them gets in, um, then you're good to go. And so just. Also, you know, making sure that um, if you have two people in mind, don't be afraid to send this link out to two people or three people. Um, you just want to make sure that you get that recommendation in because that's critical to your um, uh, to your application as well. Yes, and I want to tag on one more thing to that. So when you're doing your recommendation letters, be considerate of who you ask to do your recommendation letter. Um, one thing that students do, and I get um, asked questions for a recommendation letter, is they forget to send me a resume or CV. That's always should be in that email. Um, always keep contact with people. Um, I'm a big one on that networking piece, as I stated before. So whether it's an email, a phone call, I have, I have um, mentees that text me still many years later, and they're still texting me. And I've sent those texts, and I'm texting away um, just to give that guidance. So it really is a two-way street when you're communicating with your mentors, um, the ones you meet here at NASA as well. 
And so talking about mentors, I said, what, what's a mentor and how do they guide you? Hmm. So I will ask, I will answer that question. So a mentor really is, um, they really are the, the subject matter expert and they're going to show you exactly what your um, ob obligations are as far as your tasks and your, and, and, and your duties here as, a, as an intern. And they are um, mainly guiding you through, um, I know for the process with um, Katarina, we always do a, um, a list of deliverables. And so we actually do like a PowerPoint and, oh, it's a real job. And we sit down, <laughs> we sit down and we go through clear as, as concise what the expectation is, what you're going to be working on, so there's no mystery. We provide all the information on, you know, she didn't know what contamination control is, so of course she had to read up on what contamination control was. So we gave her a nice manual so she can go through and read. Um, we were there for questions um, when we were um, going through snow days, and she was. And we were, I had to explain to her how Virginia is a little funny about snow. I'm glad we're still through that process because she's still my mentee, and I, I'm really responsible for her. So we're, it's it's a mutual thing. We're here to help you get to the next step. And you guys are here too to help us really get through the process of being here at NASA. And, and a lot of time we do really need that intern, that intern um, feedback because sometimes we look at problems a little different and it's great to get these different collective ideas. And when an intern comes in, I always we always talk about this, it's so interesting to see the, the input we get from you guys because it really does help with our mission. And so Brittany, <laughs> how did you choose your center here? Uh, for me, it was more, I knew there are a lot of different NASA centers, and a lot of them focus on different things, even though they work on many things. But I knew for me, I wanted a research center, because that's my main focus, doing research. So I just chose every center that had research center attached to the name. But that doesn't mean that if you don't apply to a specific one, you won't get a call from that one. Very good. And I can kind of see one there on the bottom right of my screen. It's talking about what advice would you give future interns who have their own families and need um, to leave, um, I guess I'm going to say to leave them. Um, <laughs> yes, I got, good, I got good vision. I can see that. <laughs> so the reason I saw them and I saw families, um, that was really my case. So when I came here, I came under a different program called the Pathways Program, which is actually mentioned on the Aussie website. And so that is really a work program in which I was in graduate school. I was studying material science and engineering, and I, I had a family. This is, what, this, this is not my first career. This is one of many careers, and I was going back to grad school to change careers when I first came through here. And so I would say the advice I learned from that was to really be mindful of my schedule. When I got here off the bat, I sat down, I had an Excel spreadsheet, I remember I had a planner, and I had my work calendar. And I'm sitting there and I'm scheduling my life away, and that includes everything from intern responsibilities, um, if I had reports that I had to write, um, to even date night with my husband, all of it was on the schedule. So the more organized you are in the process, that's how you can survive your internship. If for those who are like myself, who had families, when you go in very blindly, it's a very, um, Weird scenario. You need to really have that that path, that plan. And so, okay, we're gonna get the. So let's go ahead. So what's the last? I want I want the last bit of advice from all of the interns on um, just on your experience here and what you hope to get from this experience and what your future plans may even be from this experience. We'll start with Brittany. Um. So my advice to all of you watching us is that even if you're not interested in science per se, there's a lot of opportunities for you on NASA. We need every single career here. So even if you're on publicity or accounting or photography, apply because there's a place for you here. And as for me going on, I just I hope to get a pathways and actually get a job here. So that's my and cool. What's your my yeah. bit of advice mm -hmm. is um, always follow your your secure uh, your uh, curiosity, um, and that's uh, basically what I've always done, and that 
that is how I end up here. Um, I'm getting my master's in electrical engineering, and um, what I did was I was curious about the machine learning aspect and the robotic aspect of things, and I took the initiative to go out of my way to you know um, learn machine learning, to do neural networks and stuff, uh, to have that implement. And when I applied, I applied for uh, this pathway. I mean this uh, internship, and um, I got that. And because of my curiosity, I uh, I am in the role I am now. So my best advice is just follow your curiosity because you already know what you want. Alrighty, and Katarina? Um, my piece of advice uh, would just be to not limit yourself to what you think you know or what you actually apply for. Um, there are a lot of opportunities out there and somebody looking at your resume might think you're a perfect fit for this opportunity even if you don't or you don't know what the position is. Um, but just go ahead, take like a step and take it. Uh, it'll benefit you in the long run. It's more experience, and it's NASA, so it's really <laughs> <laughs> <You're right laughs> And last but not least, Sean. <laughs> um, so I think I have two pieces of advice. Um, my first one I would say is uh, never sell yourself short. Um, always be super thorough on your applications. Um, like I said a little bit earlier, um, you might not think something applies, but um, you know NASA is looking at everything that you've done, and they look at you holistically as a person. So I think that. Like, use that to your benefit and really talk about what you've done and the skills you've had. Um, and then my second piece of advice, I think, would just be, you know, be willing to branch out and, uh, do th and go places you haven't gone before. Um, NASA is full of explorers, and, you know, that's a big thing here, so don't be afraid to explore. Alrighty. Well, this is the end of our, our, our time with you all. Um, we definitely hope to see you again. <laughs> Please apply. Don't forget the Yossi website. Um, these the deadlines are coming soon, March 1st for the, um, for the summer interns. Um, we also have our Facebook page at NASA Interns, our Twitter page for NASA Interns, and our Instagram page as well if you want to, to see information and see what our interns are doing here at NASA. And we definitely look forward to your application. And again, again like I said, the deadlines. Deadlines are coming uh, March 1st for the 2018 summer internship. We also have May 31st for the 2018 fall internships. Um, we really need you guys to be thorough, like we said about those applications. Please fill out the profiles. That way it goes through on the Aussie website. But we definitely look forward to the application.